Well, hello and welcome to Building the Premier Accounting Firm. This is your host, Roger Connect. This is a podcast actually designed for and meant to help individuals who own, operate, bookkeeping, accounting, and tax businesses. It's here on the show that we bring on the experts, addressing various things that you need to consider as you're running your company, trying to offer those clear and concise accounting services so that you can take care of your clients and get paid what you're worth. As it relates to the business, one of the things that we try to do is each week have on the show experts related to various things we need to consider, such as marketing, pricing, selling, onboarding, staffing, just a number of things that we need to consider as we're running our businesses. Today is going to be a wonderful discussion. I happen to have a guest on that I'm excited to have. He's coming to us from down under. It's Michael Haynes. Michael is a B2B go-to-market specialist, author, and speaker. He is a director and principal consultant of his consulting firm, Listen, Innovate, Grow. Michael is also the author of a book, Listen, Innovate, Grow. It's basically a guidebook for startups and such to actually help businesses focus on taking care of their customers and focusing on the passion that we each have for our companies. Now, with regards to his success, he is someone that is very notable. Michael has over 25 years experience working with companies ranging from micro businesses to large corporations across a range of industries, including professional services, financial services, telecommunications in Australia, Canada, US, Brazil, Asia, just around the world. Michael is actually based in Sydney, Australia and works with a number of companies globally. So Michael, welcome to the show. Thanks, Roger. Great to be here. Really looking forward to our conversation. You bet. No, this is going to be a lot of fun. So first of all, one of the things I always like to start with is your journey, just essentially what got you to this point in your career. So give us a little bit of background as to what got you to become this go-to market specialist. So in a nutshell, Roger, great question. I was working in uh, corporate for a number of years, um, working across uh, I was always a bit of a mix, working across marketing, strategy, customer insights, working on cross-functional initiatives. Did that for a number of years, working in a large telecommunications company, various banks, uh, one of the big consulting firms. Um, and then uh, 2010 in my last corporate role, um, turning the big 4 and I thought, you know what, I want to do something meaningful. And uh, I took six months off. Uh, went back to Canada, then spent four months in South America, volunteering in an after-school program in an indigenous community in Peru, learned Spanish, came back to Australia after that phenomenal experience. I said, you know what? I need to follow the footsteps of some of my members of my family because my sister and my cousin are entrepreneurs themselves. And I th- said, I need to go and work with my people, small and medium businesses. Uh, love the work, Raj, I did in B2B, in big corporate. So I decided to focus on working with small and medium businesses that operate in a B2B context. Now, after that journey of six months going into uh, Canada, Peru, and doing the things that you did, why was it come back and start a business and not just enter back into the workforce? Um, I just felt um, I had done enough. I learned a lot in corporate. Um, I learned what to do, what not to do, how to treat people, how not to treat people. I very much enjoyed the work itself. Uh And small and medium businesses, I just felt like they always have felt like they were my people. Again, having family members that are entrepreneurs, I think is part of that driving force. And just knowing the impact they've been able to have on their businesses, um, I wanted to replicate and do the same. As for small, medium businesses, we're often neglected from a B2B standpoint in terms of the resources and strategies. Uh-huh. Um, everything often talks in the big corporate context, but not for us as that you know, 10, 12 accounting firm, um, consulting firm, what have you. A lot of the experts don't focus on our work World and what it means when we have to do some of the things that the big firms do, but in a smaller context with smaller budgets. Well, it is good to point out that it is a different thing when you work with small businesses. So I'm glad you're in this space. Let's talk about go-to-market strategies. Clearly, the word market exists in there, and it's it's different than a marketing strategy. So as you work with accounting firms, what does go-to-market actually mean? A great question, Roger. So your go-to-market strategy is your holistic pr- uh, plan on how you're going to take your firm, your services, and solutions to market. Okay. So it covers everything from you know identifying market opportunities, what are the kinds of right services and solutions, as well as your components around uh, client acquisition, uh, retention, renewal, and client expansion. So it's your full end-to-end um, strategy roadmap. Marketing is a component of it, Roger. Sales is a component, but firms need a full, holistic, end-to-end 
go-to-market uh, plan, go-to-market strategy. So when I'm working with my clients, uh, my accounting clients, we always talk in the context of what you know of our of go-to-market strategy. Uh, we all and I'm always reinforcing that because marketing is only a component, uh, an important one, but not the only one in putting together an effective uh, strategy to build and grow your firm. I love it. I love what we're talking about here because it is more than just saying I have a product or a service and I'd like to offer it and just presuming that the people will come. There's so much more involved with just basically the business model around the pricing and the costs. So let's go to some of the elements that make up this go-to-market strategy. I'm assuming we can begin all the way at the beginning as to the ideal customer. What is it they need? What's the pain they're experiencing? And what is it that we're going to offer? So give us some of the key components that make up a go-to-market strategy. Sure, Roger. Now, I just want to put in some context. My focus is working with B2B mm -hmm. professional service firms. So I work with the accounting firms that, uh, for example, accounting firm I'm going to right after this call, they deal with fintech, prop tech companies. So they're accounting Excellent. firms dealing with other other businesses. Yes, B2B. And so, B2B. So the number one thing we have to remember in B2B, it is not um, it's just not enough to be uh, client driven to understand the client organization. We have to be buyer driven. We need to know for our clients who makes the decision, what are their priorities, and how do they buy. Those are the three fundamental questions. Uh, I always tell my uh, professional service firm, my accounting firm client, we must have that understanding around the decision makers who are going to decide, are we going with your firm or someone else's? So it's making sure we have those buyer level, decision maker level insights around those three core uh, questions is quite critical and is a foundation for helping us to map out the go-to-market strategy. You know, I love how you're simplifying this down in these very precise steps because in the B2B market, obviously as accounting professionals, we're typically working with our clients and therefore it's business owners. It's the small business owner themselves and they're the decision makers you're describing them. And from a B2B perspective, obviously they've got certain needs at a business level that we need to be able to address that they're going to then consider as they de decide whether or not to use our services. So what are some some of those key elements that you're trying to help the client of yours that work with to understand about the the decision maker the buyer what needs they have in order to make that financial decision so we really need to unpack you know the, the decision makers you know what are some of their key priorities what are their objectives what are they trying to achieve um, are they looking for new market opportunities are they looking for uh, client expansion um, in terms of they have current clients but you know, for example, they're only getting, let's say, $10,000 a year worth of business. And they're looking to see how the average client spend can be $50,000. Um, they may be looking to, um, for new, new client acquisitions to acquire new clients. Sometimes it's entering new markets. So we really have to understand what are those strategic objectives and priorities uh, that the uh, business owners, those C-level uh, decision makers of our clients have. Very important we have a detailed understanding of those. You know, I like that because when we're thinking about our ideal customer and we're trying to create, let's say, an avatar of that individual, one of the things that we need to do is figure out what causes them to pay the money for the fees. So as we're assessing what the services are that we're going to provide them, we've got to determine what their needs are. And in accounting, just to keep it really simple, there are three things that we typically have identified that resonates with the business owner that really gets them to say, I'll pay for the service. And this is regarding either bookkeeping, accounting, tax type services. And the first of which is money in the bank. Are the services you're able to afford me going to basically move me towards having more money in the bank so I can run my business, meet the cash flow needs that the company has, make payroll and so forth. So money in the bank is very essential. The second happens to be profitability. Is what you're offering me going to help me make more informed, intelligent decisions to move the needle on how I can be more profitable? And if you can provide that information, that's valuable. But then the last typically creeps in is tax. The taxes as the business owner wants to legally lower their tax liability turn in their their taxes in a timely manner, do so accurately, but most importantly, perhaps in a cost savings way. So if I can legally lower the tax liability of my clients, if I can ensure that they're being more profitable and keeping more of the money they're making, if I can ensure that, that, that they have the money in the bank, that is the more likely client to say, I will pay for that service. And so once using your system to identify the need of the client and how we can meet that need, what's that next step that they would actually then consider as we're trying to do this uh, go-to-market strategy? Okay, a great question, Roger. One thing I want to add, uh -huh. another important element we must understand about our uh, accounting firm clients is uh, a big question is where are they going? How do they buy? 
where are they going for information? There's Good. been a fundamental shift in the world of professional services. Uh -huh. um, accounting folk, uh, clients, well, they don't just ask how to get something solved, is where are they going to, to get answers? Who can help me solve my problem? Yeah. So we really have to understand where our clients are going for what I call um, AIR, advice, insights, and recommendations. Oh, very good. They are they're, they're tapping into um, business groups. They're tapping into talking to their colleagues. They're going to events. They're often going through their industry and professional associations. That is very much part of the decision makers, the, the, the business owner, the MDs buying process now. It's tapping into these networks. We need to know where those networks are, those trusted sources, because that is where we're going. That is where we need to be seen, heard. We need to be immersed living in that market. So that is a, a very fundamental key question we have to get uh, an answer for. I'm loving how you've brought up this concept of air, and I want to dive into it a little bit deeper because I agree with you. What's happening today in the marketplace as it relates to B2B services is they're not making impulsive decisions oftentimes. What they're doing is they're finding a need, they feel a need, they have an itch, and so they're going to start going and participating in communities, groups, organizations where this information is being discussed freely and perhaps people are contributing. And so if we can actually come in, be a contributor, freely offer some things that are educational that actually position us as being the expert, they're going to then see that we clearly know what we're doing and can help them. And eventually they're going to see the time has come for them to pay for that service. So let's talk about AIR. What, what does the acronym of AIR stand for again? So the acronym AIR stands for advice, insights and recommendations. So, you know, your uh, clients or prospects are looking for advice on, you know, new opportunities, how to solve, uh, you know, new challenges. They're looking uh, for insights around, you know, market conditions, uh, you know, what's going on in the competitor environment. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the broad client customer needs that are, are going on? They're looking for recommendations around new strategies and solutions, potential partnerships, uh, potential tools and solutions that they can be using. And so this is the number one thing now that professional service firm, uh, personal service buyers are looking for. Uh, Roger, there's been studies done by Forrester, Gartner, Hinge, and in our world of accounting being part of professional services, that is the number one thing that expertise, depth of expertise, that our clients and prospects are looking for. Therefore, our fundamental reason for being, the, the, fun, the foundation of our go-to-market has to be about delivering air advice, insights, and recommendation where our buyers are looking for for information because they're going to third parties now. They're doing a lot of self-research, a lot of uh, education, but they're going to third parties. So putting content and throwing it up on your website and doing SEO is no longer enough because they're going elsewhere. They're talking to esteemed folks such as yourself. They're going into their industry associations. They're talking to their colleagues. They're in a mastermind group, or in many cases, they're in several business groups and communities. They're going to all these different places and reading and educating and asking, who can help me solve? So we have to be out there in the ecosystems, in the market, where our clients and prospects hang out and making our content, our air visible and accessible um, in those realms. Oh, I'm loving this. You know, one of the things that I learned that's related to this, and this is something I learned a number of years ago, is the marketplace today, in order to participate, expects from us really two things. We need to freely educate, and by educate, I mean offer information as to what the customer needs to know and why they need to know it. We need to inform them as to why these things matter, and in our case, it's obviously accounting related, but the thing we hold back is the how. The how is what the customer actually pays for, but as we freely give, as you're suggesting with AIR, the advice, the insights, the recommendations, as we freely educate them as to the what and the why those things are so important, they will quickly see us as the experts, the authority, and eventually when they have a need willing where they're willing to actually pay for the service, that's when they'll come forth pay for us to then be able to provide the how, doing the work and taking care of their needs as it, as it exists. But it's the what and the why that we're providing, as you're suggesting, with the air uh, approach. So do you have any suggestions or recommendations on how to do that effectively? Sure. So, uh, Roger, I've created a, a go-to-market framework. I uh -huh. call it a buyer air-driven go-to-market framework, air being advice, insights, and recommendations. And fundamentally, the go-to-market strategy framework has three core pillars. Number one is content. So what kind of content we're going to be creating, uh, and that can be articles, blogs, white mm. papers. It could be the likes of doing live discussions, um, interviews. Again, to provide that advice, insights, recommendations. So it's creating the right kind of content 
content. And it's about the distribution of that content. Hmm. Are we making it visible where our buyers are going for information? So the right industry and professional association, putting it uh, in the right uh, periodicals, uh, um, putting it um, obviously on your website, SEO, uh, making sure it might be visible through the various groups, mastermind communities. So having your content, creating content, distributing it, that's key pillar number one. The second pillar, Roger, is events, but what mm. I call micro events. Micro events are your events anywhere from 30 minutes to, to I would say, about two hours. Okay. Because business owners are very busy. And yes, there's lots of content. And there's more content on the internet now than ever. But part of what our decision makers, um, our buyers are looking for, is being able to distill that information. They want to get perspective. Roger, what do you think about, you know, um, approach X, Y, and Z? What has been your experience? So they want to have opportunities to have dialogue with peers, with experts. They want to be able to have question, uh, answer and ask questions. So having micro events, and by micro events, these could be things like having, you know, uh, q and A's. It could be doing um, round tables. It could be doing mini mastermind sessions. Um, it could be doing uh, webinars. So these can be, d- be done online or offline. But Roger, there's a lot of value in doing these in an online setting because folks are very busy and folks will be making time if there's going to be a good, valuable event where they're going to be able to ask questions and get some air on, you know, that, you know, uh, that key transaction that they're looking to do to enter the U.S., people will make time for it. And my clients have found a lot of value being able to do online events like monthly live Q&As because people will make time. It's easy to, to squeeze it in the diary between meetings where they can go and dial in while they're driving to their next meeting and they can listen in and get some insights around some of those key questions. So yeah. content, doing events, micro events, and those work quite well together. Because you can put out an article or maybe a short article series or a short video series and then lead folks to say, come to our next round table or our panel discussion that we're going to have on X date. So content and micro events work very well. And then the third pillar is strategic collaborations. Okay. By virtue, Roger, of how people are now buying, because it's all about the who, who can help me. Uh, collaboration is a great way to really, you know, drive and empower your content and micro events. So you might collaborate with another uh, firm to do a joint article or to do a joint uh, LinkedIn live stream discussion. Uh, you might collaborate to do a, a breakfast event, a roundtable. So there can be around co-creating your content and events, cross-promoting your content and events. Um, you can also do more elaborate things such as creating more holistic uh uh, you know, custom bundles, which might include, let's say, you know, consulting, training, and reporting, and some of those deliverables you deliver in conjunction with another professional service provider. So that so strategic collaborations, which can be from a simple piece of content right through to actually delivering product services and solutions, are another component. And it's these three elements: content, micro events, and collaboration are the um, foundation of your of your go to market and the three actionable elements you can use to uh, both acquire new clients as well as to help retain and grow them. So it works for, you know, acquisition as well as retention and expansion. Yeah. Well, the thing I like about your three pillars is the fact that they're actionable. They're things that we can deliberately do, plan, execute, and actually do to engage with our potential customers. And I think it's a great way to position ourselves as the authority as well. So I, I like what you're sharing there. If you're looking to advance your career in accounting, you need to enroll now in the Job Placement Assistance Program. This course is created for accounting professionals to find a new job, apply for a promotion, or get a better position within a company. It is the turnkey process to actually help you better interview, get the job you deserve, and get paid what you're worth. For more information on how you can take advantage of this offer, go to the episode description. Enroll now in the Job Placement Assistance Program. Do it for free and act now. So the the question I'm going to also ask now is, after you've identified these very important things, what led you to want to write a book? I mean, clearly you had a process, you had a system, you had something that you could actually take to market and help businesses implement, but why write a book about it? What was the book for? So the uh, book, uh, Listen, Innovate, Grow, was a book. The uh, reason why I wrote it is because I found most of the um, uh strategies, the insights, perspectives, were all written for big corporate, you know, to understand your customers, undertake segmentation and customer value analysis. Mm -hmm. 
Most small and medium firms don't have, don't know what that is, don't have the budgets for it. Uh, and I'm just finding that constantly with a lot of the strategies and issues, everything was written for big corporates. So I said, well, where's something for us where we talk about what are the means, how we as small and medium professional service firm leaders can understand uh, and learn about our customers. So uh, it was about providing our people with the strategies, tools, and tactics that are very practical, but yet very strategic and will deliver the outcomes in a means that's feasible for them. Um, That's really the key driver around writing the book. So what I'm hearing you say is there's a number of effective strategies that can be done in the larger corporations, things that they've proven to be useful. You're taking those and in your book, helping the small business owner understand what those are and how to implement them in their companies. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's exactly right. So really quickly, Roger, to start with, you know, about listening, understanding your customers, understanding your buyers. Um, You know, the big firms will use all kinds of very sophisticated tools. For us, a small and medium firm, you should be, you know, conducting interviews with and interviews and workshops with members of your clients and your prospects decision-making team. And you have structured discussions to cover off some key topics. And then you share that with insights across your organization. And you do so by doing with a cross section of your clients. So those that love you, those that hate you, those that have left, and perhaps those that you're aspiring to get so we can get a full market view. But doing depth interviews where you document and share very powerful, very effective way to really gain those insights that you need to build your roadmap for your full go-to-market strategy. Um, and, it, and, and it's cost-effective and anyone can do it. Now, part of your go-to-market strategy consists of the entire process, which is post-sell. What are some of the things that you feel are essential to address as it relates to you got the customer, they're agreeing to pay for your services, now what? What, what part of the go-to-market strategy is the post-transaction? So in post-transaction, you know, when you've got those clients, and particularly, you know, you're, you've got clients that are going to be key to your business, to growing your business, either because you're looking to get that initial key client to help you crack into the U.S. market so you can do X and Y, or they're going to, they're a going to account for a large part of your business, you need to be having client management plans for all of your clients, particularly those A priority clients. Are you mapping out? How are you going to nurture and manage those clients, leveraging the go-to-market framework around content, events, collaboration? What are the things are we going to be doing to providing them to be making sure that that the decision makers as well as the users are getting what they need? So when it comes time for renewals and expansion, that, you know, your firm is the obvious firm of choice. But there needs to be that upfront uh, proactive planning on how are we going to nurture, manage, and uh, look after clients. And that is often not done. And that is where problems um, can occur and things can start to unravel. Yeah. What I would add to that is as it relates to the go-to-market plan is we need to consider once the transaction has occurred, there are a few things that we need to not neglect. The onboarding process, what we're doing with our clients to bring them in-house and actually take care of them. And so onboarding is very, very key and communicating effectively what that experience will be like. I think a lot of business owners presume that once they sign the dotted line saying that they're going to use our services as it relates to bookkeeping, accounting, tax, that they're thinking that there's not much more of their time needed in this. But in reality, there's so much that needs to be done in those first maybe three months as it relates to getting access to various things, learning the business model and so forth. But even after the onboarding experience, it's then the client nurturing. How do we actually stay engaged with our customers so that they on a monthly or quarterly basis have insights brought to them through the services that we're providing, whether it's accounting services, tax strategies. These are things that they need to be learning and at a minimum on a quarterly basis, feel as if they're gaining some insights and knowledge about their own companies that we're providing. The other Other thing that I would also add is part of this needs to include an understanding on our part of the cost per acquisition and the lifetime value of the customer. If we know what it's worth to us to get a new customer, then obviously we're willing to put the time, the money and energy into that entire process. And so that go to market, if I knew that the lifetime value of my client was going to be $40,000, I'd be willing to spend the few hundred or thousand dollars that's necessary to find and get that ideal customer. So these are all things that I think make up a key component component of what your go-to-market strategy is, is uh, addressing. So the, my next thing that I wanted to talk about is listening. I know you're big on listening, and basically there's different kinds of listening. Share with my audience what that consists of. So there's three kinds of listening, and listening is all about getting that 
in-depth understanding Roger. So there's three kinds of listening that should be done. One is listening to you, listening to you as being the leader of the firm, the firm itself. And this is really understanding, you know, understanding how is your firm uh, doing? Mm -hmm. What are your goals, the objectives of the firm? How is it performing? Where are you having your strengths? Where are you having your wins in terms of revenues, profitability, you know, client recognition? Where are there areas for improvement? Very important that you do that internal listening to really understand where is the firm at so you can determine where best the firm needs to be going. The next uh, type of listen is listening to the market. Now, this is quite critical uh, and it's becoming critical now more than ever, particularly for us in professional services, in accounting, where there are so many competing dynamics. We've got so many kinds of players trying to move in. So listening to the market is all about really understanding, having an in-depth understanding of those industries and those geographic markets that we're both currently serving Mm -hmm. and those we are seek to serving. So it's understanding, you know, the trends, market performance, regulations. Are there, you know, new innovations? Are there new competitors coming through? Really understand the the landscape, the ecosystem of what is going on uh, within the market. Now, I know as small and medium uh, business owners, we're very busy. Many people say, so Michael, how, you know, where, do, where I don't have time. Where do I start with all of this? Uh-huh. Your industry and professional association of your t- key target industries and markets is the repository and should be the first stop. And I tell all of my clients, you should be a member of the industry and professional association for those key industries that you're currently serving. I as agree. they're the repository. They are the repository, their website, you will find white papers, events, um, case studies, all of what you need to really build your understanding of the market and also to start making some of those key connections with some of the people in the market to help you live immersed as part of your marketing. All of that, a great starting point is your industry and professional associations. And then the third one is listening to the customer. And that's really about, you know, understanding um, our clients. And again, we are B2B. We must make sure that we are listening to the buyers. And so we need to make sure we can understand, have a depth of understanding of those three questions. Who makes the decision to buy and influences? What are their key priorities and challenges? And how do they buy? With whom are they going to, uh, you know, for their air advice, insights, and recommendations? We must have an in-depth understanding around those three elements around the buyer, because that will be critical in preparing a very detailed, practical, and highly targeted uh, go-to-market strategy. So with those three listening things, where do you feel accounting professionals maybe struggle the most? They struggle the most with the last two, listening to the market. um, Often some do a little bit or not at all. uh, And then listening to um, listening to the clients and making sure they're tapping into their decision makers and getting that robust understanding across all of those three key questions of who's involved in the decision making, what are their priorities, challenges, and objectives, and how do they buy? What are their trusted sources? Because, Roger, it's all about the whom now. People are asking the question, whom can help me solve X? Who can help me go into those new markets? Who can help me reduce my taxes? Who can help me start generating multiple ways? It's all starting with the who. And so we have to have an understanding of that so we know where in the market and with whom we need to be collaborating. We have to have an understanding on all of those three buyer questions. You know, I, I'm liking this conversation about listening because I do feel that as accounting professionals, we don't ask enough questions so that we can listen to our our clients. One of the things that I feel is very important is the accounting profession is notorious for preparing the financials. We're, we're doing the bookkeeping. We're giving them the financial reports that the client should have. But at the end of the day, we've not ba- bothered to ask questions as it relates to the business model to understand, is the chart of accounts even set up correctly? Are we sh- reflecting as it is the narrative as the business experienced it? I mean, the business owner is day after day living the business, but are the financial reports telling the story of what they're experiencing? So the only way to get to that is to ask questions questions. I see here you spent more money in advertising. Tell me about what changed. What happened with that? What were you hoping to get out of it? Oh, so you anticipated that with that new advertising campaign, you would have seen more of these sales. Well, we're not seeing those. What do you think happened? Why did that take place? It's just being curious. That natural curiosity that we can have of our clients can lead to great conversations, all of which, like you're suggesting, come down to that listening. Are we actually asking enough questions so we can just sit back and listen and have the client tell us more about their company and what they're experiencing? Get your copy of Red to Black. 
It is the book written for accounting professionals to help businesses turn around and go from being in the red to being in the black. This book is written for consultants, business owners, operators, and managers. No matter what your client's product or service or irrespective of your talent, skill, or expertise, as an accounting professional, you'll be able to use the principles presented in this book to actually become for your clients the profit and growth expert. Every chapter is filled with principles and concepts that you can use immediately with your clients to lead them from being in the red to being more profitable in their business and see you as in fact their guide, their coach with the expertise and wisdom that you can bring from this book. In the book, you have how to guide exp explanations. You have models that you can follow. You're shown how to actually calculate and determine the fees for your services, the actual model that you'll use during the implementation of all this, and most importantly, the end all results with your clients. Get this book now and see what it is you can do to offer this new revenue producing service as in fact the profit and growth expert. For more information on how you can take advantage of this offer, go to the episode description and there get the information you need to take advantage of this today. Now, the other thing that I want to dive into here is something that I think is is interesting as it relates to uh, professional services. How do you feel business owners purchase uh, professional services or behave today? And, you know, what is it that they're really looking for that we need to be a little bit more considerate of as we offer our accounting services? So from what I've been seeing, both from the de delving into the research and also my observation with uh, clients, mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a few things going on. Um, our clients, our prospects have broad needs uh, with respect to what they're looking for, and they are open to and looking for a lot more than just a simple transaction. They're often looking for advice, guidance around um, you know, how to build and grow the business and meeting some of those other broader strategic objectives. And so there's lots of opportunities there. Um, that if you are listening to um, can be great opportunities uh, for, um, uh, for accounting firm to be able to expand and do so. Um, again, it's becoming a lot about the who. So in, in terms of you know, how are um, clients finding out about accounting firms, a lot of it, again, it's going in, it's tapping into their networks where they're dealing with, you know, whether it's their, their mastermind groups, their communities, tapping into the professional networks. It's very much, you know, within their trusted circle. That is how they are very much identifying who are going to be their professional service providers. Um, I also recently just did some interviews with some of uh, one of my clients' clients and finding that the um, business, the accounting firm clients are very much open to suggestions as to who and how can provide uh, the services that they require. So, you know, there's an opportunity for you to even be as an accounting firm to be that kind of trusted center of advice to be helping them navigate and bring the appropriate people uh, together. Because, again, it's very much revolving around the who. Well, I'm liking this conversation about the go-to-market strategy simply because it's the business model. It's where, where we're stepping back from what it is we do, how we do it, and who we're servicing to really kind of put all the pieces together. It's like dumping the puzzle out and putting all the pieces where they need to go and seeing if there's anything missing. And if there's something missing, filling in that gap so that we can have a good picture of what our business is doing for our customers, why they pay us, and more importantly, what it is that we can be doing to make it even a better experience. So I mean, really appreciate uh, appreciating this conversation. So Michael, as it relates to your business, the travels you've done, the life you've experienced, I'm curious, what is it that you feel business owners struggle with as it relates to implementing or developing a go-to-market strategy? What holds them back and maybe impedes them from making the most of it? Uh, I think a couple of things hold them back. One, I think, is the lack of it's the lack of knowledge because many, uh, when I have my initial conversations with accounting firm leaders, they often jump into, well, Michael, I've been doing, you know, I've done email, social media, uh -huh. and X amount of ads. And so it's this whole focus on tactical, and they think of go to market in terms of marketing tactics. And they're not aware of these broader, you know, broader issues, uh, the importance of listening and understanding your market, of understanding your clients and understanding your buyers and having that depth of understanding. Um, so it's that lack of listening, lack of awareness that you, you need the full go to market and not just marketing and sales tactics, which are not aligned as well to how people buy. Advertising yeah. is great for awareness. Advertising is not how people buy professional service, professional services. Interesting. Um, but yeah, I've had people come to me that have spent 
thousands of dollars on Google ads and other sorts of tactics with no understanding of, well, who's the actual decision maker for their services? And then they wonder why there's this big, you know, $20,000 that has gone down in marketing spent on tactics and they've gotten zero for it. Wow. Wow. Well, I can definitely say that uh, being a little bit more deliberate and intentional with our business plans, who we service, why they buy our services, how to actually wow them with our experience. Yeah, all those things are very, very relevant. And they need to be more conscious in our efforts to provide quality accounting services. So I appreciate your insights here. So I have one last final question before I start to wrap this up. I'm curious, with all of your travels, you, you've you mentioned that you've been to you know Canada, you live there in Australia, you went to Peru. What is one of the highlights of your travels that you felt you learned going and, and more or less seeing the international community? Uh, okay, um, my travels back to Canada is Canada's home. Um, but in terms of my travels, probably my time in South America was the best because okay. just seeing the different peoples, different cultures. I traveled uh, through Peru, Brazil, Uruguay, Chile, um, working in the after-school program in an indigenous community, um, you know, 40, 40 miles north of Cusco, uh, uh-huh. was absolutely phenomenal. Um, uh, everything, I was, I was profe Mike. I was helping um, high school kids in this after-school program. They only spoke Spanish and Quechua. Uh, even the coordinator, Rosaria, only spoke Spanish and Quechua. So no English, uh-huh. working with these kids who live in mud huts and... Um, uh, great people and just, you know, have big aspirations to do things in some interesting parts of the world. It was phenomenal. So I would have to say of my South American adventures, um, my time uh, in Huayacoche, the indigenous community working at the after school program as Profe Mike to help them with math um, was was definitely the highlight. Um, Profe Mike. My- I like yeah. it. You know, yeah, I, it. Oh, I might. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I lived in Chile for a period of time. I also have done humanitarian work a number on a number of occasions in the Dominican Republic. Uh, going to the DR, going to Chile, working with these individuals that live, as you just mentioned, in in mud huts, no less. It's very humbling. And at the end of the day, you you at least I came away with an appreciation of the many things that I have, but more importantly, that I can be happy with little, very little. They were so happy. They were joyous. They were smiling. And it was because of their outlook on life. And they had so little, at least initially, as I saw as it related to life. And uh, I came back with a renewed appreciation for just the little things in life that matter most. So, uh, yeah, very, very uh, inspirational to travel overseas and see that it doesn't take much to be happy in this world. So absolutely, so true. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. One of the things I'd like to do for my listeners is point out that Michael has actually been kind to provide for us in the episode description some things that you would want to take advantage of. This happens to be an offer that I'd encourage you to go and get. It is his B2B go to market playbook. It's basically a free download that is available in the episode description. So go there and you'll get the information you need to take advantage of that. In addition to that, what I'd like to also provide you is actually something called In the Black, Nine Principles to Make Your Business Profitable. It is literally a how-to guide to work on your business and put the nine things in place that you need in order to be profitable with the services that you're offering. In addition to that, one of the things that I'd also like to point out is a book, or not a book, but a course called The Turnkey Business. It is a business plan for accounting professionals so that you can go out there and effectively offer accounting services and get paid what you're worth. So and definitely go to the episode description, get the information you need to take advantage of these offers today. In addition to that, I'd like to just share with you a summary of our conversation. Loved how Michael, after working in the corporate world and uh, taking a little bit of a hiatus when he was in his 40s, traveling the world, came to the realization that it was time to get into the entrepreneurial space and take these corporate strategies that are obviously effective in larger businesses and bring to the small business community. I really enjoyed the, the concepts that he talked about with the three pillars as it relates to going out into market and providing your services, engaging with your potential customers. I like the idea of air, uh, advocating and and such so that you can really go out there and deliver good quality content as it relates to educating your customers, inspiring them and uh, helping them realize that you have good quality services to offer. So the three pillars were very insightful. The acronym of air was uh, very uh, important. I felt to at least understand as we're looking at how we can better grow our businesses. But then in addition to all this, the idea of listening, the concept of are we actually paying attention, taking the time to hear what our our customers are saying, and more importantly, meeting them where they are. So three really big and important things that I feel are relevant to what we're doing as accounting professionals to service the small business community. So Michael, with that said, I'd love to get a final thought from you. What would you like to leave as a closing thought? 
My closing thought would be for accounting firm leaders, get out and talk to your clients. You know, take out a piece of paper, make a list of who are those top five or six clients that are integral to your business, um, who are those decision makers, and make appointments in your diary to have a conversation with them, be it in person or phone, doesn't have to be very long, 20 minutes, and to really unpack, you know, what are their priorities and challenges? Where are they at now? Where are they looking to go? And uh, try to understand how you might be able to better service them. So who are those five or six clients? Um, Find out who the decision makers are and get out and have uh, those initial 20 minute conversations. It will be a game changer for your firm's guarantee. I'm, I'm loving it. It's that and listening. So very, very well said. So Michael, I appreciate you being on the show. For my listeners, if you haven't already, we'd love to have you subscribe to the podcast. As you subscribe to the podcast, make sure you actually set the notifications so that you are notified each and every week when we release new episodes, interviewing and speaking to the experts, hearing what they have as insights as it relates to having the premier accounting firm in your area. Also, with regards to GrowCon, I'd like to speak of the fact that this is a, an event annually where we get together and hear from the experts interact with our peers, and also work with the people here at Universal Accounting Center that are committed to your success, I invite you to get a ticket. Join us for GrowCon. It is every May. It's where, as business owners, we get together, and as it relates to our bookkeeping, accounting, and tax services, find out what others are doing that are are successful. See what it is we can do to take our business to that next level, and most importantly, work on our company. So I invite you to get your ticket now and register for GrowCon, and I look forward to seeing you there. In addition, I want to invite you to go to universalaccounting.com. It's there in the navigation that you can find additional free resources that I would encourage you to take advantage of, as well as the podcast highlights. The podcast highlights consist of various playlists that we've assembled of the shows I've had, where I've had on the ex- or head on the show experts that have addressed very specific areas that you can now dive deep into as it relates to your current situation. So definitely go there to the highlights, find what playlist is uh, applicable to you and binge listen that as well. Now, in addition to all this, I do want to encourage you if you'd like to discuss these principles further, if you'd like to see what more you can be doing to work on your business, to reach out to us at Universal Accounting. You can do so by going to universalaccountingschool.com or you can also visit us or speak to us by calling 801-265-3777. So again, that's universalaccountingschool.com or 801-265-3777. And always remember this, if it's about accounting, it is universal. Take care, be safe out there and have a wonderful day.